so I wanted to just chat about this new case that came down the Supreme Court in declaring affirmative action basically is unconstitutional, but I'm not really wanting to talk about the issue of the use of affirmative, affirmative action on whether or not that protects racial diversity, because that's been a controversy, well, controversial debate for quite some time. That's not really what I'm interested in talking about. So if you clicked on this video because you are interested in how affirmative action is going to be affected in the missions, colleges, this is not what it's about. What I want to discuss is how the ruling was exclusive. It only primarily considered African Americans and Latinos as people being affected or just even in consideration in their ruling. And that is so far from the idea of diversity. And so in that, I wanted to bring up the issue of there are many, many, many countries that have Arabs and that they're not even being allowed a true identity. So you have the census and all the data collecting they do for, you know, collecting on racial so many things that you may fill out applications in all of our society from medical to school to pretty much every application will have the question of what your race is or your ethnicity. And pretty much you'll have the other. Okay. But I don't see why Arabs shouldn't be included as an ethnicity, but you will hear stories how somebody had clicked other and then, like, for example, somebody who had applied for a job and clicked other and then was asked what ethnicity they were and told them that they were Arab. And then they crossed out other and made and told them that they were white. And while there may be a lot of, you know, Middle Easterns that are perfectly OK to be considered white. It's a big thing. And sadly, I personally do not believe the numbers of collection of how many Arabs there are in our country is accurate. As of current, it's about three and a half million. I don't believe that for a second, not a second. I believe the, the number is much larger and I believe that their voice is pretty much quashed in so many different ways by not even giving them an identity as a minority. So when you hear the word, are Arab and Iranians white, the census says yet, yes, but many disagree. How can they possibly say somebody with olive complexion, look at this person, you know, their, their, their complexion is much like Latinos. They have dark hair, they have dark eyes, they have, you know, a different skin tone. And so it, I just think it's, it's egregious that they do this. I have always felt this way about, you know, not allowing them, not even considering to allow them. If you have a bunch of people that are from the Arab countries to, to come to, you know, the government and say, hey, we, we demand, we want to be considered our own ethnicity. They won't even hear it. It's not discussed in the media. And then you have the issue of Native Americans. Now, Native Americans have their own subcategory on, you know, applications and paperwork and so forth. But that's a whole other racist thing they do to Native Americans. There are so many different tribes and many, many Native Americans are their own nations, their own governments, their own religion, their own culture, their own customs, their own set of laws. And yet they're considered one race. And, and back in the Reina Dura versus Reina case from the United States Supreme Court, they ruled that, you know, they, they opined, if you will, during their oral arguments that they were considered and they did in their different rulings state that they were different ethnicities. So for example, you have one tribe who will prosecute another person of another tribe just simply because they're listed as a tribal or native American. That's not even right. You're taking to them a foreign nation that has different set of laws and different customs, different religions, different religions, different beliefs. And and what the United States Supreme Court ruled said that that would put them in a situation where they're going to be sitting on a 
in a trial where they're having a jury pool of a completely different race of people that they don't not allowed to vote there. They don't have any say, you know, to vote and they can't sit on jury. So they can't have anybody of their own ethnicity on jury pool. So they brought that up and they rightly considered that. So what about Middle Eastern people? You know, um, they're just, they're not even included. And I just think that's wrong. And it's sad that when they considered this ruling, um, they were just exclusive. And it just, it just to me shows the mindset of the United States Supreme Court of, of very, very narrow, non-diverse ideologies when, you know, maybe, maybe the front of action, the arguments that was presented Maybe there was some value to it, maybe not, but they were exclusive in who they were allowed to have oral arguments, very exclusive. And I think it's, it's just, um, it was a six to three ruling. And again, they were exclusive on who they were allowing to even be a part of the case. And I don't know, maybe it's the fault of, of people that didn't rise up. And say, hey, we want to be heard. You have your Asians, you have your Middle Easterns, you know, and Native Americans. Um, I don't know if they were even included, but I think it's wrong. If if Arabs don't want to be classified as white, why should they be? They're their own ethnicity. And so, anyways, I just wanted to discuss that, and I will put a link to these articles. So here's an example. This person, Samira, asked to mark her race. Okay. Nothing she believes represents her family's Iranian heritage. She'll have to identify white or, or some other race. It erases the community. And it really, it really does, I believe, by not including them. And how are you going to know? actually how many Middle Easterns there are living in America if a large amount of them are being identified as white how many of them are actually clicking other on the census or you know they're classified as white and so not just the Census Bureau but you know how many people like that one that was in that interview and he wrote other but they just crossed it out and listed them as white how is that right? How is that not discrimination? So I will put the link to these um, articles in here. And, and you don't hear about this in the media. This is why I really have a problem with it as well. We're the invisible minority. The media focuses on Latinos and African Americans because of voting purposes, in my opinion because they want their vote and there's a large amount of them in the country. But how many of them, of the other ethnicity of the Arabians are here that are not being counted because they're not even being classified as a minority. They're the invisible minority. And this is sad. And I don't believe this is a political thing. I believe both parties are, have their cause in this matter. And I don't care what they say in the front. They may say one thing on the pulpit or on the speaker. But actions and laws that are being signed into by presidents of both parties. And I'm conservative Republican. Okay, I blame both parties for this problem. And you have Supreme Court justices who are of both parties. Who are ruling on cases that affect all minorities. So you can't just blame one. I don't even want to hear politics, right? That's what I'm saying that for. <laughs> The legislators pass the laws, the president signed them in the laws, and then the federal judges in our nation probably have more effect on racism than anybody in our land. And I, don't, I think that's completely underlooked and it's unfortunate. Here's what they consider Native Americans. They're not a race. They're and ethnicity, which is ridiculous. It says the race of the Native Americans of all the American continent 
is mongoloid. Put all the Native Americans in one little shebang bang. Can you imagine doing that to Asians? Because they have similar DNA? This is so sad that this still continues in 2023. They're different nations, different customs, different ideas. They don't have the same DNA. They have similar DNA. Just as the Asians, you have Taiwanese, Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, Malaysian, Korean. There's a lot of different Asian people, but they're not the same race. They're not the same DNA. They have similar DNA. But can you imagine putting them all in one? But that's but see, this is what they do. And it's just like black people. You, the, the, they think that, that people that are dark-skinned with certain type of hair, that they're all one. There are many different um, groups of people that are black. And they're not all African-American. And some people who are the smaller number here, there's more of African-Americans here that are black than there are people they think everybody comes from Africa. All black people are from Africa. And there's a lot of black people that take offense to that. Like, don't call me African-American. I'm not African-American. But you don't hear their voices. You don't hear their voices. You don't hear that in the media. Like, what they're saying right here is not what was ruled in the United States Supreme Court. The Duro versus Reina case. This is not what they're, that's not what they said at all. And in fact, the Oklahoma Supreme Court ruled in the end of November that tribes should not be trying to prosecute other tribes because, and then they quoted the Duro versus Reina case. They shouldn't have jurisdiction over other tribe members or non-Indians. That's what the Oklahoma Supreme Court ruled in end of November, 2022. But the people who keep pushing are the universities, the educational sources. They keep pushing this. And these are white people doing this. They continue to, maybe intentionally or not, they continue to strip people of their identities. And it actually is a human right violation because the United Nations, their principles are that it is a human right violation to strip the people of their identities. And they continue to teach this regardless of what United States Supreme Courts have stated in some of their rulings. So what they've done to the Indians is they've stripped them down to like legal classifications. So example, are indigenous people a racial minority? This is what they're saying. But according to United States Supreme Court, they are a separate race. It says indigenous peoples are frequently classified as a racial minority. Okay. The fact that they're frequently classified as a racial minority, why does this educational university trying to push to strip them of that right to identity? However, it's important to understand this is their idea that Native American or American Indian are st not strictly racial categories. Being a member of a tribal nation provides membership status. Okay, that's a legal position. That has nothing to do with your race. You can take a DNA test, even though it says, look, it says DNA test cannot tell you that you are Native American. Um, yes, it can. You can go get a test and say that you are 100% of a Native American DNA. It doesn't mean you're legally a member of a tribe, but it identifies your blood position as a human being as it do, is a Native American. It does, see, they're trying to say you're not Native American if you're not a member of a tribe, right? You can't even legally identify yourself as a Native American unless you're a member of a tribe is basically what they're pushing for. But that's not even what the census paperwork does. The census paperwork doesn't require you to be allowed to identify, to click the box Native American, you have to be a tribal person. Okay, there's people who are 100% Native Americans that are not a member of a tribe. And see, back when they started that whole tribal thing, you had to have locked in your paperwork within that, that window era to be identified 
as a tribal person. Okay. But if our census paperwork allows people currently to identify as Native American, whether or not they're a tribal member, but this is what they're pushing for. See, they want to take away all the numbers because there's money that goes towards societies and cities and education. And this is based on the amount of races that are there. They appropriate funds to help you know, just different things. There's so many different reasons that they list race and ethnicity. It's not because they're trying to identify what ethnicity are. There's so many different reasons. And there's benefits of knowing the different, you know, races that are in a community. And so they're trying to look what they're teaching. That you cannot say that you are not even Native American, even if a DNA test says that you're 100%. Native American because the status is defined by belonging to a tribal nation and that is not even legally true but this is the UCLA pushing this and this is behind the scenes trying to strip people of their identity and their racial classes this is them doing this they're trying to influence and the more influence they get the more it will eventually affect that, I'm telling you, mark my words right now as you're listening to this video, there's going to come a day where the United States Supreme Court, if this stuff continues, where the United States Supreme Court will rule that a person cannot be classified as Native American unless they're a tribal member. And that will strip. There are so many people that are Native American that are not a member of a tribe. So many people have Native American blood. They may be a quarter. They may be an eighth. They may be half. They may. There's many people who are... 100% Native American that are not tribal members because they couldn't get into the tribe. The paperwork wasn't done during the time that it was, you know, they didn't trust people back then. They didn't trust the government back then. Or maybe they didn't have papers for whatever reason. So many people missed getting in to getting their tribal membership. So there are many Native Americans or people with Native American blood that are not going to to be allowed to identify. According to UCLA, you are not Native American if you are don't belong to a tribal nation or community. That's just so racist. That, I mean, it's a human right violation that people need to be aware of, and I beg you to share this video. So you have Native Americans being stripped of even being allowed if they these people have their way. And you have the United States Supreme Court that just ruled and made a ruling that just basically only considered Latinos and African Americans because basically they had the largest numbers. So you have a lot of other minorities that why they may not have as many numbers as African Americans or Latinos. All in all, the amount of minorities is in this country that's not being recognized is many millions. And so it's just grossly unfair. And I just hope that people, when they can talk about this ruling that came down that they will consider these other issues that's not even being talked about and the effect that it's going to have on them as well and also please consider the fact that they were exclusive in that in that ruling and I hope people are not okay with that so here's an article about a scholar who specializes in, in Asian American and I don't know that they were even considered. They just took the, you know, as far as how many people was allowed in the oral arguments of that ruling that just came down. Our country is going backwards. It's growing in numbers. It's largely growing in numbers from what the amount of people that's here now that was 20 years ago. You have a lot more people here of different ethnicities. And for the record, white people are people from, there's over 200 countries, and there's many, 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 many countries that never had anything to do with slavery. And it most certainly wasn't just white people that was involved in slavery. And it was not America who started slavery, but it was America that ended slavery. And I hope people will remember that. But this sad thing about going backwards, because you, how many Native Americans sit on the United States, uh, Supreme Court? None. How many Asian judges sit on the United States Supreme Court? None. 
How many Arabians, how many Arabs sit on the Supreme Court? Justice, none. None. So they're stripping away things that not only help with affirmative action, but also have other purposes and benefits to support diversity and protection of minorities. And maybe one day, maybe one day we'll truly have a diverse United States Supreme Court, but we don't have that right now.